For decades, the global narrative around HIV has remained the same. Africa as the epicenter of the crisis, a continent battling a virus it never created, often portrayed as helpless, dependent, and in need of constant foreign aid. HIV rates are declining in the United States due to prevention efforts and awareness. But in the Deep South, the epidemic continues to ravage African-American communities. The headlines, the documentaries, the charity campaigns all echo the same theme. But what if that story is no longer true? What if the tide is turning? What if right now a quiet scientific revolution is unfolding, not in a Western lab, but right here on African soil? What if a possible cure, a real chance at HIV remission, is emerging from Africa itself? And what if the world, especially the West, is choosing not to see it? Welcome to Win Africa, where we uncover the stories they don't want you to hear. In this episode, we spotlight a bold new development led by South African scientists a clinical breakthrough that could change the future of HIV forever. A discovery that dares to challenge the pharmaceutical industry, disrupt the status quo, and reclaim the narrative of African innovation. So ask yourself, why isn't this global news? Is the US and the rest of the world ignoring Africa's progress toward an HIV cure? Stay with us as we uncover the science, the silence, and the possibility that the cure the world has been waiting for may already be here. The breakthrough nobody's talking about. In January 2024, a groundbreaking study made headlines, but not nearly enough of them. At the Africa Health Research Institute, AHRI, nestled within the University of KwaZulu-Natal, something extraordinary unfolded. Now, fresh optimism has been injected into South Africa's search for a functional cure for HIV-AIDS. A Durban-based scientist has been awarded over two and a half million dollars to fund research in this regard. Professor Thumbi Ndungu, a globally respected Kenyan immunologist and virologist, led a clinical HIV trial that defied long-standing scientific expectations. The trial introduced a bold approach. Combining early antiretroviral therapy, ART, with experimental immunotherapy designed to train the immune system to control HIV on its own. And the results? Nothing short of astonishing. What makes this particular uh, outcome uh, uh, promising towards HIV treatment? Well, I think this is a, a promising study because it's the first time, in, uh, at least here in Africa, where we are showing that a combination of uh, early antiretroviral treatment with immunotherapy, uh, followed by treatment interruption, can lead to uh, ART-free control of HIV. So this uh, offers some hope that we may be moving towards uh, an HIV cure where people can uh, live without antiretroviral therapy. As you know. Out of 20 participants living with HIV, four, that's 20%, remained virally suppressed for over 18 months without continuing ART. No daily pills, no side effects, no strict medication schedules. These individuals lived healthily and normally, while their immune systems kept the virus in check unaided. The results showed 30% of the participants were able to stay off HIV treatment for nearly a year, and 20% uh, uh, remained off treatment until the trial ended at 55 weeks. Even after the trial, uh, those four individuals are still being closely monitored and have uh, continued without medication uh, for over, what, 1.5, a year and a half now. Um, and, and what are you seeing then as far as their immune uh, system or even their viral load uh, is concerned? So, um, again, these individuals who are in our study, they had the option to go back to antiretroviral therapy as soon as uh, the, either the viral load rebounded or um, to go back on antiretroviral therapy once they finished uh, 48 weeks in the study. But these uh, four participants chose 
to remain off antiretroviral therapy because they are controlling the virus uh, without antiretroviral medication. And of course, the purpose of antiretroviral medication is to control the virus to undetectable uh, levels. So for the time being, these individuals are continuing to be monitored because we don't obviously know when the virus might rebound, and that's possible. There have been cases of people who control the virus for some uh, time, and then the virus rebounded. So we continue to monitor them very closely. In terms of the lab investigations, we are doing a lot of work uh, to try and understand uh, what led to control in these four individuals, whereas the rest, 16, did not control. Uh, we think that we have some hints in terms of what the immune system is doing in these individuals, but that is ongoing work, and uh, hopefully we will be able to share the findings uh, when they become available. At the moment, we, we, we don't have the full picture, but we think that it is something to do with the immune system, where we are inducing the immune system to be able to fight off the virus. In the world of HIV research, this is what scientists call functional remission, and it's the kind of outcome that's been pursued for decades. Let that sink in. For the first time in African research history, people are living freely without lifelong HIV medication, not in theory, but in reality. And yet, the world remained largely silent. The global media cycle moved on, Major pharmaceutical companies, many of which profit from lifelong antiretroviral treatment, barely acknowledged it. Even within Africa, the story didn't receive the attention it deserved. Why? Possibly because it challenges the billion-dollar treatment models that dominate HIV care. But for researchers, activists, and millions living with HIV, this development is a symbol of hope. It proves that remission is no longer just a dream for wealthy countries or distant futures. It's happening here, now, in Africa, and it's being led by African scientists. Professor Ndongu's work is part of a growing wave of homegrown innovation that's challenging global assumptions about where breakthroughs can happen and who makes them. It's a reminder that Africa is not just a passive recipient of global aid or Western science, but a powerful force in the future of medicine. This isn't just a scientific milestone, it's a wake-up call. Globally, over 39 million people live with HIV, with 1.3 million new infections every year, and nearly 630,000 deaths annually, according to UNAIDS. Sub-Saharan Africa alone accounts for two-thirds of the global total. For those living with HIV, antiretroviral therapy is life-saving. We are very excited because this is a step to the right direction. Uh, as a person living with HIV, we've always been looking for cure rather than taking medication for the rest of our lives. But it's also a lifelong commitment with side effects, stigma, and massive economic burden. But what if the cycle could be broken? What if the virus could be controlled or even cured without daily pills? Professor Ndungu and his team may have found that what if? You'd expect a scientific breakthrough of this scale to dominate global headlines. But instead, a whisper. Is the silence accidental or strategic? The global pharmaceutical industry, worth over $1.5 trillion, thrives on long-term treatments. Could the muted response be a reflection of geopolitics and profit margins? A world where who finds the cure is more important than finding the cure. Let's not forget what happened with COVID-19. While vaccines were being shipped overnight to Western nations, Africa waited, sometimes months, to access life-saving doses. We were told to wait our turn, to stay in line. Now, Africa might be first in line and it's as if the race was cancelled. But what if foreign nations discredit the research? What if international agencies demand validation through Western trials, delaying recognition for years? And what if, like many times before, Africa's discovery is claimed by someone else? This time, Africa is playing differently. Plans are underway to protect the intellectual property, document the trial outcomes rigorously, and retain local control. 
The Africa CDC, the AU Health Commission, and independent biotech firms across the continent are working together to keep this revolution African-owned. No more waiting. No more handouts. No more erasure. Ironically, the United States and Western nations have spent billions in recent years announcing HIV reduction targets. In recent years, we have made remarkable progress in the fight against HIV and AIDS. Scientific breakthroughs have brought a once distant dream within reach. My budget will ask Democrats and Republicans to make the needed commitment to eliminate the HIV epidemic in the United States within 10 years. We have made incredible strides. Incredible. Ending the HIV epidemic plan aims to cut infections in the U.S. by 90 percent by 2030. But what if Africa, long treated as the recipient of help, is actually offering the key? Ignoring Africa's breakthrough isn't just scientific hypocrisy, it's a missed opportunity. Imagine what a world without HIV could look like, and imagine that cure being African-born, African-tested, and African-led. For too long, Africa has been seen as the ground zero of HIV despair, a continent marked by loss, struggle, and dependence. But today, that image is shifting. Africa is no longer just the face of the crisis. It's becoming the heart of the solution. From the labs of KwaZulu-Natal to the minds of bold African scientists, a new story is being written. One filled with resilience, innovation, and a determination to take control of its own destiny. This isn't just science, it's a statement. A declaration that Africa is done waiting for a cure to be handed down from somewhere else. This moment is not the end of the journey, but it's a powerful new chapter. A chapter that proves Africa is not just catching up, it's stepping ahead. The silence around this breakthrough speaks volumes. And maybe that's exactly why we need to speak louder, to amplify what the world seems too hesitant to acknowledge. Africa is leading its own revolution in health and science, and the world, it better start paying attention or risk being left behind. The individual is infected with the virus, but they are living. They're able to live without uh, antiretroviral drugs and still be able to control the virus. So this, this grant is really going to be addressing that particular question of whether we can achieve uh, a functional cure within, uh, within our setting here in South Africa. Young. If we can control HIV without daily therapy, we might just be closer to a cure than ever before. If this story moved you, don't let it disappear. Like, share, and subscribe for more powerful stories that reshape the narrative. You can also click the video on your screen now to discover the incredible story of Maxwell Chikumbuzo, the African innovator challenging the global energy industry with his groundbreaking self-powering vehicle.